Hey guys, welcome back to Zero World News. Here with an update on the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Ukrainian President Zelensky has gotten very upset with Biden concerning the Nord Stream 2 pipeline sanctions removed. So uh, the article I'm about to read to you guys is from RT.com titled, Sorry Ukraine, Uncle Sam won't be riding to your rescue. Biden delivers essential wake-up call to Kiev, ending years of delusion. By Paul Robinson. So let's go ahead and get started with the article. Since 2014, the U.S. has encouraged Kiev's leaders to believe that it has their back come what may. Now, as the Nord Stream 2 pipeline nears completion, the Ukrainian president is screaming betrayal as he realizes he was misled. A while back, it used to be popular in some circles to play up talk of the Putin's live, the impending sellout in which Russian President Vladimir Putin was apparently destined to throw the rebels of Donbass under the bus and surrender them to the tender mercies of the Ukrainian government. The irony is that while Putin's live never happened, the fury coming out of Kiev this week suggests that Ukraine itself has suffered a dramatic and unexpected Biden's live being sold out by U.S. President Joe Biden. Biden's predecessor, Donald Trump, had a troubled relationship with the country, which he accused of trying to undermine his election campaign in 2016. Republicans also used the business dealings of Biden's son, Hunter, in Ukraine to paint Trump's Democratic opponent as corrupt. Consequently, the Ukrainians generally welcome Biden's election as president and have viewed him as a much more reliable ally until this week, that is. Now things are looking a little different. For the past few months, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has been pressing Biden for a meeting. His position was that this should take place before Biden holds talks with Putin. Otherwise, the argument goes the Russian and American leaders might stitch up Ukraine's fate and then present Kiev with a fate Accompli. Better that Zelensky gets to Biden first, they say, so as to forestall any attempt by the Americans to betray Ukraine to the Russians. This, however, was not to be. Speaking to Zelensky by phone on Monday, Biden offered to host him in Washington later this summer after Biden meets Putin in Geneva on 16th of June. Apparently, the White House has decided that managing relations with Russia takes precedence over keeping Ukraine happy. A not unre unreasonable position given that Moscow has nearly 1,500 nuclear warheads in its arsenal, whereas Ukraine has not a single one. The safety of the world tends to focus the mind on what is really a priority. Another blow to Zelensky, the Biden administration has finally given up its campaign to sabotage the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, which is designed to bring natural gas directly from Russia to Germany. At present, Russia exports natural gas to the rest of Europe, largely through an old Soviet pipeline system running through Ukraine and pays Kiev some $3 billion a year for the privilege. Kiev fears that once the new underwater link is up and running, Russia will be able to stop the supply of gas through the country, thereby depriving it of much needed cash. For this reason, Zelensky and his allies have been lobbying the Americans to prevent the pipeline from being finished. To that end, the Trump administration imposed numerous sanctions on companies involved in the project. Now, though by the Biden government has waived those sanctions on the main German company involved, in effect giving the pipeline a green light for completion. This was little more than a recognition of reality. Nord Stream 2 was going to be completed no matter what America did. So it made little sense for the U.S. to degrade its relationship with Berlin at more, any more than it has already been. Given a choice between the goodwill of rich and powerful Germany on the one hand, or the weak and impoverished Ukraine on the other, it was fairly obvious which one Washington would side with. Now, the only surprise was that it took so long to work it out. Adding insult to injury, Putin announced last week that the first section of the pipeline had been completed. This news provokes Zelensky into a mini tantrum. Speaking to the Axios News website, he complained that he was confused and disappointed by the American decision to waive sanctions on the project. He was positive that America could stop construction if it wanted, he said. Zelensky was also angered by the fact that the Americans did tell him about their decision and that he had to learn about it from a White House press briefing. How many Ukrainian lives does the relationship between the United States and Germany cost? He asked. The Ukrainian president's comments reveal a remarkably na naivety, or naive, naive, I guess, 
It seems he truly believed both that the United States is all powerful and that the Americans would prioritize relations with Kiev over relations with Moscow and Berlin. Now he is learning the hard way that in international politics, as Vicetta said, the strong do what they will and the weak suffer as they must. If the episode acts as a wake up call for Zelensky's government, that will be a good thing. For too long, Ukrainian leaders have given the impression they are living in a fantasy world in which the West will in due course induce Russia to abandon any support for the rebellion in Donbass with a campaign of massive economic, military, and diplomatic pressure. This vision has manufactured an unwillingness in Kiev to make the concessions required to bring peace to Donbass under the Minsk II Agreement of February 2015, most notably the granting of special status to the provinces of Donetsk and Lugansk. As a result, it has played a major role in per perpetuating the conflict in eastern Ukraine. Now, to be fair to Zelensky, the Americans have done everything they can to encourage the fantasy that Russia can be pressured into surrender. As he notes in his interview with Axios, Biden had offered him direct signals that the U.S. was prepared to block the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. This is plausible. It fits a pattern of behavior in which Washington has led Kiev's ruling elite to believe it will have their back come what may, including in its efforts to ignore the Minsk agreement. Consequently, it is perhaps not surprising that Zelensky feels betrayed. The American government has misled Ukraine's leaders into thinking that it will go the whole hog on the country's behalf. To an outside observer, this wasn't never plausible, but in the desperate world of Ukrainian politics, it may well have appeared otherwise. Kiev's bubble has long since needed bursting. To the extent that the Nord Stream 2 debacle has done that, it has paradoxically been a rather good week for Ukraine, no matter what Zelensky or his supporters may think. End of article. Okay, so Nord Stream 2 is uh, one to two months away from being completed. Germany is uh, having elections coming up soon, I do believe in September. And if the Green Party wins, they may shut down the, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline altogether because they're very hostile towards the Russians and very pro-US. Uh, in this, in another article that I had read, Zelensky, Zelensky did mention that they're put they're pinning all their hopes that the Green Party will win this September. And uh, I do believe that the U.S. is doing the same thing. So expect some meddling in that election where um, in the seventh hour, the Greens might actually take lead and might actually win the whole thing because it's uh, it's that important to the U.S. to get someone they that agrees with their policies in power in Germany. So... Uh, that's something uh, something to, to watch out for. Uh, another thing is, what does Ukraine have to offer the U.S. anymore? They lost the Crimea, which was a big prize if the U.S. would have gotten control of Ukraine with Crimea. So they're not getting that anymore. They already took uh, Ukrainians' gold because they're using it as collateral for the billion-dollar loans that, that uh, the U.S. has given that country and they might not even pay that back so they might have lost all the gold that ukrainian had so uh what else does ukrainian ha ukraine has to offer is, is this the end of the ukrainian experiment ukrainian story the ships from uh, the uk that were supposedly going to be sent in and show support for ukraine in the black sea uh never happened they sent in a little, little small boat in there, and it, it was just for show. So uh, what else does Ukraine have to offer? Very little. So I'll keep you posted on anything new that's coming out. Uh, if you like this stuff that we're putting out, uh, please subscribe, like, hit the notification button, and I'll see you in the next episode.